I started off at a church playing the organ there and I was playing on an instrument of 1912 and it was a big romantic organ and that was the sort of organ that I thought was absolutely the finest thing and I eventually had to make a decision on what I was going to do with my life after school and my sister suggested organ building and my sister did, yes, because uh, I decided that going to university wasn't the thing for me. So uh, at that time it was a very uh, restricted sort of business, uh, very old-fashioned, um, very traditional. And every firm that I applied to said I was too old to join. And also what they really didn't like was anyone who liked to play the organ. That was definitely uh, not a very good idea for them. It's because it was a waste of time. You wasted your time playing the organ rather than working on it. So there was uh, finally one company that uh, said they might be interested and they weren't part of the traditional organ building world. And I eventually, after three times of persuading them that I would be okay, they thought, oh, we'll try him out. So this was Grant Deacons and Bradbeer, and they were definitely not uh, the traditional English sort of builder. They built organs of the most modern sort, using the most modern materials, of glass and aluminium and steel and chipboard, uh, almost no natural wood in them at all. And um, they had just completed the organ at New College, Oxford, which we have just restored after 45 years. So uh, that uh, made me switch to being uh, very interested in the most modern sort of organs. So from English Romantic organs to ultra-modern continental style organs uh, was my route in. And my interest in historic organs really only took off uh, in 1976, six years after I'd started, when I went with Edward to Poland and we were taken around by the Department for the Conservation of Historic Organs in Poland, which was of course communism at the time, uh, but that was part of their cultural heritage. So they had a very good uh, system of the conservation and uh, recording of organs and that was a bit of an eye-opener for us. <laughs> it's actually quite good. <laughs> <laughs> it also is the way that uh, many uh, organ builders on the continent were uh, looking at organs and they were more aware of uh, the proper conservation techniques and in uh, preserving their organs in the right way and uh, researching them and uh, doing all sorts of things that were much more towards the early music and uh, museum world in uh, a restoration style. And in England that was very, not second rate really, and it, there weren't many people who were following that line of action. And there was actually considerable reaction to the very modern system of organ building. And many organ builders and organists 
rather preferred the romantic organs. So there was a strong movement to try and go back to those rather than have these modern organs. Like that. That is all in tune. What makes a good organ builder? Uh, Martin makes a good organ builder. Uh, what well, makes a good organ builder? It's a combination of things. Yeah, it is. Uh, and yeah. also, uh, it's uh, whether you make a good organ builder or a good organ restorer. That might be two different things. So, a good organ builder would be able to you know, make all the parts and know what, how they interrelate and how to draw and so on. Uh, but to restore organs, you have to be much more aware of the history of the organ, uh, as well as uh, different sorts of knowledge about the materials and how to use them and what not to do is a very important part of it. Mm -hmm.